Hello, my name is Mikko and I am Eikka. We are from Apocalyptica and we are here to tell you what's going on in Apocalyptica World 2013. What they reloaded is actually uh, it's a massive, massive uh, project which is based on dancing, music, pyros, acrobats, whatever. It's, it's a massive thing we, we did uh, with Gregor Seifert, who is a very famous choreographer. Um, we had the premiere in, uh, in Leipzig in July. And um, we had the Apocalyptica on stage, maybe 80 to 120 dancers, MDR Symphony Orchestra, MDR Choir. So it was a really, really massive piece about Wagner's life. So it was a combination of Wagner original music and original apocalyptic music. It was fun to do. The greatest challenges on, on doing this project was actually the way how we worked. Uh, that the Gregor Seifert, uh, who was also dancing the main, one of the main roles, uh, he had very clear a script for the piece, how all the scenes will follow each other, when, how, how the Wagner will be born and when he is a kid and you know. Uh, so I got um, length for every scene. They were roughly like, okay, this scene is like, for example, like this scene is four to five minutes long and this is what's going to happen on stage and this is what, what what's the energy should be on the music and, uh, and sometimes Gregor wanted to have a specified Wagner composition and therefore maybe the biggest challenge was uh, to combine Wagner music with the new music because Wagner of course is a great composer and, and many of his music is, is, is perfect and there, there is nothing to add <laughs> to it. So it was a combination of having what, what's Apocalyptica's role on the Wagner pieces and how we can create music which is as exciting on the performance as well, the original music. Because no one, it's, it was all apocalyptic music, was new composed music for this project. So nobody never ever heard it before. And everybody knows all the Wagner, <laughs> the biggest Wagner songs, uh, pieces which were in the piece. So I think that was the biggest challenge to write the score for the movie, kind of movie, which didn't exist, you know, without picture. Coloring a picture you just can imagine, but you don't see it. I think when we first went to rehearse the whole band in the big uh, hall, old Messe Hall, like this uh, con uh, convention hall, and even our rehearsal space was the size of a small country. It was a <laughs> huge place. And then to go to the place where the dancers rehearsed, which was equally big, a different like location, then it started to sort of like uh, define that it's going to be really, really huge. And then to go to arena where everything was double-sized. <laughs> that, that was a cool moment. <laughs> That's a cool moment. But in the other hand, it, it was the very start of, of the project and first meeting with Gregor gave an impression that it would be something very special and big because it, what he was explaining, it was all the time like, okay, and then, then this, this thing, then we have this, there will be this head of the baby, it's maybe five or six meters tall, everything was like... Yeah, but normally <laughs> you don't take it for real, but somebody yeah, explains yeah. it's like a, telling a stories of your fishing trick. <laughs> it's the this big and blah blah blah, but it was... Yeah, yeah, it, it was actually bigger than yeah. what he said. <laughs> because he said that, the, okay, the stage will be maybe 50 meters long, but it was actually 70. Yeah, <laughs> and it's somebody saying 50 meters, yeah, 50 meters, my yeah, ass, yeah. it's like... But it was... It was really cool. aspects, yes, they uh, influenced the compositional aspect at least that much. I didn't see any visuals except maybe some pictures of the, the dresses and I visited Leipzig once, the, the warehouse where, where all these things, the, the dragons and, and all these mechanical things were built already. I think that was in February so I got the, the vision of the roughness and, and, uh, and the visual, visuals, yeah. 
So of course, if you if you know that okay, this is a big scene where it's dragon, somebody's fighting with dragons and and giants. Of course, that that's kind of a strong visual image. Even you don't see it for real, but you, you can imagine. And of course, that that uh, influences the writing, the music very much because you know okay, this needs to be on that scene where are the dragons. So what can I do? I need to do. Dragon music. <laughs> <laughs> That's his biggest passion, to do dragon music. He's always talking, I want to do yeah. dragon music. Swords and dragons and... Every time when you are not doing your role plays, then yeah. you're composing <laughs> dragon music. Yes. The difference to... to uh, comp uh, between Wagner Reloaded and Apocalyptica regular performance was of course that uh, we are part in, in Wagner Reloaded it's not our show fully, we are part of, of the bigger structure and, uh, and actually need to follow kind of the choreography and need to f fill in a certain role yeah. which was given to us so we couldn't just you know fool around on stage like we as we would like because it was there were many more other important things happening action wise on stage but um it was it was fun it was yeah. interesting to do something different yeah and i think musically quite often our own energy uh, comes on stage that we are flexible and things change and we have this sort of back and forth kind of communication going on during the show and we change parts and we tease each other playing it differently but here I say, I said it's, it was just to obey a bigger purpose and uh, therefore kind of it chained us but uh, it, it was really creative to do it that way. Plus what was fun, the, the, the things we were most excited everybody or scared of before the show was the first walk when we <laughs> walk on the stage with the human stairs because that was tricky with the long jackets and you know it was with the hoodies on you were not able to see anything and it, you know it's, it feels strange to do something without your instrument on stage which is totally has nothing to do with what you normally do also the other other uh, scary moments were always that we, we played on the top of the tower like uh, on 10 to 12 meters high and, and it was very narrow, it was only two meters deep and there were no fence in the front. And, and many times we had to run from downstage up to the tower with the cellos really fast. So it was like four floors, how many floors? Like four floors of really narrow, dark stairs. Um, and like having 30 seconds to be up there and start to play. And these kind of things were made it really different. Yeah. That was really different for, for comparing to our regular show. And I think in the end everybody, we got quite good uh, with it, but everybody was scared for Ben because he's kind of a clumsy guy. <laughs> <laughs> everybody was frightened, how is he going to make it? Yeah. 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 Another thing also, one, one thing was like uh, playing in, in the moving vehicles. That was kind of uh, tricky for us in the beginning. We were playing on the top of very high bed and people were pushing it fast and, and we were playing inside the metal dragon which was uh, <laughs> massive, it was also moving and it had pyros in it and you know we were cello players, we were inside this metal head of the dragon and, and all these kind of specials which were really really fun to do but something totally different. This, this was a great project in that, that hand that we didn't need to fill in. Not, not to fill in, it's wrong wrong way said, but we didn't... It was the new platform. We, we were able to try new kind of things. We, we had these more artistic numbers, um, more symphonical numbers. And it, it's hard to say which piece it will be. You know, which, which things uh, will influence us, but those, of course, it was cool to do the live recording of this one project because the approach of, of the live sound, having the live sound developed uh, into into new level, gave us a lot of thoughts about the future album production. Yeah. And I think, of course, whatever we do, and uh, everything influences to everything, of course, and sort of it was also 
cool after anyway we have been so long in the tube it's kind of a downward seven in a tube where we did albums did tours did albums did tours even though we tried to develop the whole thing and we did throughout the process but anyway it was cut and then we did something totally different even nothing would ever exist afterwards that gave kind of a freedom to our minds that we can do so many different things that uh, if we now went to the right edge of the field we can also go to the left or up <coughs> or down or whatever and that's kind of a uh, really freeing focus. yeah and, and then the cool thing when you when you need to write music for for picture is that you need to make the music for the picture you are not thinking so much okay i'm making music for apocalyptica mm. you don't actually care about it it's like okay let's make music that fits into this picture and therefore you write different type of music mm. and then when we perform it with apocalyptic it's like oh cool this works as well this tile works as well so it's it's uh it's exciting it was exciting but it's impossible to say what will be you know the influences in the future new fresh ideas at least we've got a lot Actually, we, we treated the live CD as an independent piece of art and, and didn't think about the, the, um, the live performance actually at all. And uh, that therefore, also Gregor Seifert was not involved in any way on, on planning the track listing and uh, choosing the order for songs. And it was because we thought, okay, if we even it's, it's a live CD out of, out of the, uh, the performance. It's still, it's only place where we are releasing this totally new apocalyptic music. So we need to treat it as an independent album. That the album needs to work from the very beginning till the end, and needs to have a, a drama when we, when you just get the audio, audio, and you don't get any visuals. So therefore, we did it by our own. And there is not all the tracks also existing just because of the reason there are some of the songs are left out. Yeah, for example, all the original Wagner music, which is like, which was not really treated. Uh, it was no no sense to release orchestra playing in such a conditions. Mm. Yeah, Wagner. They, they would have killed us if we would have <laughs> put it because they know that okay, if they would go to room and record Wagner, it was also. A little bit stripped down orchestra because of the limitation of space. We had maybe, I don't know, maybe 80 pe people playing orchestra, which is very little for Wagner Orchestra. So, and it was kind of unfair. They were placed because there was this big tower at the end of the stage with in uh, four stores or four floors, and violins and or, or, or the string instruments were playing downstairs, but then they were kind of spread out that the horns were playing on the one floor and uh, uh, percussions were playing on the one floor and trumpets and uh, all the uh, brass instruments were playing on the one floor so it was really uncomfortable situation for them to play when yeah. they are not used to it. So and it, wor it worked live yes. but playing Tannhäuser, record Tannhäuser for example, Overture of Tannhäuser with a smaller orchestra in such a conditions doesn't make any, no. any, 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 any right for, for the orchestra itself. And, uh, so basically, on, on the album, there are uh, the original compositions which were written for this. Ludwig so van Toppen. Even, even it's a side project, it's almost like a full apocalyptic record. At least it's full new apocalyptic music. Plus a little bit of and Beethoven. And one old song. Yeah. And one old song, retreating. I'm personally very proud of, of the fact that now when we record a live album, there is an the apocalyptic band playing, there is certain energy, which is, it's, we, we were able to capture the live energy on the album as well. And it's something we, we have to learn more about when doing the next studio album. <laughs> yeah, I think that's something we always aim for when going to studio to record, to capture the live energy and it's so difficult and now when recording it live <laughs> and then it was there wow. and it was like, oh, oh this opens our eyes, <laughs> <laughs> this is how you do it. Yeah, but also the sound of the, of, of the cellos, it's, it's more cello-ish, 
Mm -hmm. You can really hear the cello, but it still has a lot of lot of power and edge from the amp and distortions. So um, there are a lot of cool things, and I think it's, uh, music itself it's 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 uh, unique and exciting, at least most of it. <laughs> It's hard to say. I, it's it's impossible to say what fans will think about it. So you need to ask the fans after I, they've heard it. I would guess that this kind of is uh, more focused on a certain a certain part of apocalyptic style. So I think there are quite a few fans who find it really interesting. Yeah, especially for the people who, who are the biggest fans of the instrumental. Hmm. Apocalyptic, I think they, they could find this really exciting and very welcome. You let us know when you yeah. hear the feedback. Yeah. <laughs>